Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Justin Gaffrey and today we're gonna to be doing a new kit called Frosted Blooms. And this Frosted Blooms is based on using a method I call sculpting with paint. And so when I learned how to paint, I didn't know how to use traditional art materials. So I used them what made sense to me. And I used to be a chef. And so it made sense to me to use these pastry bags and these pastry tips to kind of sculpt out a painting. And so that's what we're gonna to do today in the Frosted Blooms. So we're gonna start this piece here by putting a nice base coat on this wood panel. And what we're gonna start here with is a titanium white with a tiny bit of raw umber paint that we made. It's very light in texture, barely has any texture, kind of the consistency of house paint. However, it has a lot of pigment in there, so it's got great height and power as you can see there. So make sure you cover the sides really well on this piece. And then of course the top. I like to put on the paint pretty heavily when I'm doing these type of things because I like to show the brush stroke. Some people like a nice clean, perfect background. And you can easily do that by applying like three or four super light coats in a row and you can have a nice clean background. However, I've always been kind of a raw artist and I like movement and I don't like being perfect. And I like to see the human in the painting and the brush stroke shows the human in there. So basically you can see here, I'm just gonna keep coating this piece. It's probably gonna take one and a half coats. You know, it's going on so thick, it's gonna cover most everything, but you know, I miss spots here and there. I believe in this color because it's gonna be very kind of subdued, but it's gonna make these colors on this piece really pop. And what this piece is all about is like sculpting with paint. I don't traditionally use regular art materials, or I'd say when I first learned how to paint, I got palette knives and things in the mail and I had no idea how to use them. So I used them in the way that made sense to me. This piece is all about sculpting with paint and we're gonna use pastry bags and pastry tips. And when I was teaching myself how to paint, I would get traditional art materials and I had no idea how to use them. So I used them in what made sense to me. This is a loose interpretation and we're gonna be doing of some succulents. And we're gonna make this piece and we're not gonna be organically correct. I've never really painted exactly the way things are organically. I just kind of paint what I see in my mind. So on the panel here, I'm creating this rectangle. And this is basically gonna be the area that we're gonna fill the entire painting in, leaving the rest of the border for everything to pop out. As you can see here, I'm making an impression of the rectangle and the texture of the, what little texture of the paint is there. It's you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can use a measuring tape. You can tape it off any way you want, but just the general rectangle is good enough for me. So we're gonna start working with a bag now. And I don't know how many people have worked with pastries before using piping bags, but it's pretty much the same theory. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the bag so we can hold it with one hand and we're going to fold over the top end so we get kind of a a cup there and we can fill it with one hand. So with this bag here, the first bag is the main bag we're gonna be using with the jade color. We're gonna be using other bags too. But this bag here, we're gonna put a coupler in there. And this coupler will allow us to change tips or colors. On this one, we're mainly just gonna change colors in there. We can add little bits of color to it. So you basically take off the cap and we're gonna drop it in this, the, you know, the tapered side down. And this part's important here when we cut the bag because we don't want to cut the bag too far up because this coupling could slip out. So you want to cut it right above the taper. You know, you could see right there where it ripped off because you don't want that thing to pull through. And the main tip we're going to use on this bag is a leaf tip. And so these are all traditional pastry bag tips. You can see putting the little coupler over that tip there to hold it in. So we're gonna use this tip a lot and it's for the main succulents and I call them tentacles. I mean, basically when you, you can imagine where they would be anything, you could literally make an octopus with tentacles with this if you wanted to. So I pulled the bag really taut there and so we got a nice shape, nice cone shape there, ready to go to start filling. So we're gonna cut the tip of the jade bag off just looks like a one inch opening. Doesn't have to be exact, just so the paint can freely flow out of there. We're gonna push the jade bag down into the pastry bag 
Make sure we don't want the air bubbles in there. So we want to get it really close to the tip and kind of pull it back as we feed the paint in there. You can see it's got a nice solid structure in there. You just put about 20%, maybe a little less in that bag. One of the things about, you know, working with these pastry bags is getting the air out so you don't get these bubbles that shoot out there. And you can see I'm kind of dropping the bag down and holding it to kind of force all the texture paint to go towards the top and the air bubbles come up to the, you know, out the other side. Just practice making a nice little leaf shape there before we actually go on there. No matter how many you have to do, you can always scoop the paint back into the bag. We can kind of start small. We're going to start on that one corner and we're just going to keep pulling out and making a circle. If you need to draw a little circle in there with a little pencil, it's not a big deal. Everything's going to be 100% covered. I don't worry about things being perfect, but it's nice to be semi round at least. And you can see here, I'm just kind of creating one layer at a time going around in each circle. And as I go into the center of the circle, I'm getting a little tighter and tighter. And as you can see there, you want to pull the bag when you get into the center and start pulling it kind of more straight up. And so those kind of tentacles are kind of pointing straight up at you. And again, feel free to, you know, practice on the palette. But again, if it's not perfect, it's okay. And so I'm going to mirror this in the opposite corner. I'm going to do the same thing over again. I don't really have a perfect objective what I'm going to do here. But I know I'm going to just keep filling the entire rectangle that I outlined there with paint. And I'm going to just create various size succulents. So I'm basically mirroring the same thing I did on the opposite side. We're going to kind of make up this pattern as we go. And you can see here, I'm kind of just pulling around and just keep making these circles and keep drawing yourself to the center. Again, I'm not trying to make a perfect like Fibonacci circle there. It's kind of random, but if you want to just, you know, make it as tight or as loose as you really want to. As I said before, I'm kind of an expressive painter. So we have a French star tip here, which is an open star. We're going to put it in one of the smaller bags and you got to be careful because that tip is a little sharp. And so you don't want to puncture the bag as it goes through. And as the same with the other one, we want to cut it pretty close to the edge just so that the tip doesn't push all the way through. Pull that bag tight again. So you're gonna cut a small hole in the magenta here and we're gonna put a little, some magenta inside the bag we just made. We're not gonna put a lot in there, just a little bit. And we're gonna do enough to coat the interior of the bag, like the last, the bottom half of the bag. And what we're gonna do is so we kind of swish it around there. And then we're gonna fill in some jade and we're gonna fill in some white in that bag. Not a lot, you know, just like a nice little squirt of, of jade and a nice little squirt of white, you know, about 10% of each. And what this is gonna do is gonna give us a nice contrast against the jade there. And this is gonna give us these kind of like little flower shapes and they're gonna change colors as you go because it's gonna start out more jade and end more white, which kind of works good. It's got a very organic feel to it. You can practice on the palette there by piping one out. But you're going to get this kind of close down to the wood panel. And as you pull up, just kind of draw it up. And you kind of draw it into different directions. And so, you know, you don't want it just all coming straight up. But we're going to have some coming straight, some coming to left and right. And you can kind of create patterns out of that. Just keep plopping them down into there. We're going to kind of repeat the steps we did with the French star bag. And this is a rose tip we're going to use in this bag. We're certainly not gonna make roses with this piece, but you can make roses anytime you want with the other bags. You might even have some paint left over, who knows. But basically fit it in there and again, try and get your cut pretty close to the tip so it doesn't pop all the way through. And instead of the magenta on this one, we're gonna use a little bit of Hansa yellow. But it's a little different instead of coating the entire bag, we're gonna coat just the seam area, which comes into where the, the narrow part of the tip is, just like, one stripe into the bag so when we pipe it so it doesn't come out in a solid color you see there there's just like a nice little thin stream what's good kind of doing the narrow stream is we're not going to get a dominant yellow we're going to get a nice variegated look into this it might come out pretty yellow in the beginning but it kind of dissipates so like the first one we put a little jade a little bit of white to kind of give it a nice uh, variegated look so this one, we're going to be kind of pulling them up skinny. We got the skinny taper in up on this particular um, tip. 
And so the other ones went in flat and this one kind of comes up skinny and we kind of start from the center and we keep working our way out and we're gonna build up to the center again and pulling more straight up on this piece. So it's just giving us another different type of succulent that kind of contrasts against the other one. And what's kind of cool about this works out is like one side's yellow and one side's more green. And you know, you can kind of manipulate your way you load things into the bag to do it that way. And if you feel need to just, you know, practice on the palette, you know, get your stroke right. And basically what we're gonna do with this next piece here, this bag is a traditional star tip. And instead of doing the magenta coat in the bag, we're gonna use the jade and coat the bag and fill it with white in the middle. And so when we pop out these little stars, they're gonna be jade on the outside and the white's gonna pop around. And this white is gonna be great as a filler to kind of fill in some masses and then before we come back in with some more detail again. You know, kind of just start filling in around everywhere. And don't worry if it's not perfect like I said, because we're gonna go back in and fill over the top of these and only some of these will be exposed. And you can see here, I'm kind of creating some open areas and those open areas are gonna be where we, you know, work in the next piece again. We're gonna come back into when we were doing the traditional leaf bit for the succulent. And we're gonna do a nice big succulent on that side right there, kind of filling in that nice gap. And so you gotta be conscious of that, of filling in gaps. You kind of make it up as you go along. So you don't wanna leave big open gaps. And you can see on each side how I'm kind of filling in tight to the next one. You can see between those two succulents, there's another gap, but we'll fill that in later. So what's nice about using the coupler now, we can use the same bag of jade paint with the same tip. And we're gonna just add a little bit of magenta in there. We're gonna knock out a little bit of paint so I can get an, another succulent that has a different color to give it some contrast. But I want that succulent to be in that same pattern as that one. So you can see there, I've got a nice little dollop of magenta. I'm gonna stick that tip right back on that coupler again. It's gonna come out, it might come out pretty strong there again. But like I said, we're gonna get ourselves a nice jade and magenta succulent coming out here. I'm gonna fill it in just all around that white and kind of fill in that other big gap. You can see where there was that nice big gap across the center. And now we just kind of filled it completely in. And now we're gonna have a nice solid fill. But do you see that nice little pink line there? That's from adding that little magenta in there. And you can pretty much add any color you want in there at any time you want. I'm gonna take the same star tip and start filling it in. And when I'm, I'm pushing down to let it grab the bottom, I'm creating these little dollops here. Now I got the magenta in. And so you can see I'm just basically filling in all the voids now and creating little patterns. And it's kind of fun. There's no exact way to do this. You just kind of just want to go around and see where you need to fill a void. So at this point, you just want to take your bags and just start filling in and all the gaps, kind of the same various repetitive patterns we've been using. So whether or not you're going to bring in this rose tip and create another little yellow succulent, and some of them are going to be the star tip or the French star tip, and just start filling in the holes. Basically, squeeze every bit of paint you can out of there and as you can always just work your way to the center and kind of start pulling out more on these succulents to start pour on, pulling out wide on the outside edges and tall in the centers so just keep going in and, and filling in your gaps and fill them in any way you see fit and i'm just going to keep repeating these various patterns but keep in mind to keep different sizes of everything so everything has a nice contrast against each other, whether it's by size or by color. Again, there's no exact way to do it. You can see here just piping in these nice big star tips of white. It's like whipped cream. You know, we mess up, just wipe it off, no big deal. Little, you know, little wet rag there, you can pull that stuff off. It's gonna happen. But pretty much everything is contained in the center there and you can go as slow as you want. And so just keep going in and, and fill in. I got another succulent going in there. It's good practice. It gets, this teaches you muscle memory, how to keep working everything. You don't have to go this fast. You can kind of go at your own pace. You can stop the video anytime you want and just kind of practice one or the other. We're gonna add a little bit more contrast here and put some yellow in the next bag here with the rose tip. 
So you don't have to put as much yellow as I'm going to put in. You can put as much as you want or not in at all. But again, we're just going to keep filling in gaps. And we're going to take the rest of this paint and kind of just make it really voluptuous and just like billowing out everywhere. And it kind of gives it this vibrancy, like it's alive and just growing. It kind of excites me when I get to see that. And then it gets to kind of freeze still into a solid paint where all these little tentacles would be, you know, nice and firm. It's kind of an exciting thing about hanging these on the wall. What's good about this piece is I think it can give you confidence to build out a next piece and be very happy with it. You know, I believe in art is to get those wins every now and then that make you propel yourself into wanting to do it again and gives you confidence. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to achieve something here that you're pretty happy with. You can see there I kind of had to pump out a little bit of that yellow. I got a little too much yellow in there and I don't want it to contrast out too much. This little piece I'm going to pop in here, if you want to put one in, don't worry about it being perfectly circular because we're kind of just filling in gaps again and just getting that vibrancy and just aliveness. You can see everything is just kind of billowing out everywhere. I'm going to pop in these little raspberry looking little dollops here with the French star, give a little contrast, but I'm also kind of filling in that kind of partial roundness there so it doesn't look like it's incomplete. You know, we're kind of making this up as we go along and just filling in places. This should dry just like that. Just keep it flat. If you had a fan, it would dry in a couple days. And there you have it. And let me know if you had any questions or need any help along the way. And good luck.